Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Saturday game day. It is a uh, very bright and sunny day here uh, at the track. I wanted to share with you the tandem meeting from last night. The notes compiled all those, put it together for you. Sorry I wasn't able to get to St. Louis. I was uh, feeling a little bit under the weather and had a lot of things going on. And I'm doing this outside because everybody's working inside right now, and I don't want to bring in extra noise. So let me share my screen with you real quick, and we'll get this baby underway. All right, so you should be seeing uh, the PDF there um, for tandem. This was the uh, document in the in the meeting last night. I'll go over some of the main highlights, and then we'll talk a little bit about some examples and also reference back to qualifying from yesterday with some photos that I think might be helpful. Um, first of all, this is the D-cell map uh, for this weekend. The only difference between last year and this year is that we've added a slight D-cell at initiation. Now that has been there in previous years besides last year. And in looking at how the cars kind of developed their driving progression over the course of competition, it became much more regular for us to see a D-cell at that initiation. And so while some drivers may not be doing it, for the majority that are doing it and in these other red areas, we wanna have that as a kind of a cautionary tell that there's an expectation that there's gonna be a D-cell here. So don't run into the guy in that area um, if he is slowing down regularly. Um, you've got the first one at the initiation, you've got the long outside zone one, there's a really clear D cell coming off outside zone one. And for me, besides the big bank, the hardest part of this course is leaving outside zone one, getting into outside zone two cleanly, and then making that transition into outside zone three. There were maybe a handful of drivers that were filling outside zone three um, and also doing this specific thing, which is transitioning perfectly before and getting that back bumper in outside zone three. And I'll, I'll show you a couple examples of that um, so you have a better idea, but that was very highly emphasized um, in the driver's meeting yesterday. And there's also at least one battle that we can reference last year between Chelsea Denofa and Matt Field, where that transition, if it's late or if it is slow or if it happens in the zone itself, can cause a lot of disruptions for the chase driver. And so they're putting a lot of emphasis on that. And they did put a lot of emphasis on, emphasis on it yesterday in qualifying. So we've got the inside clip one. Um, we really want to see the cars directly lined up with the inside clip, facing it just like this and going right across it smoothly. There's that final little flip of a D-cell zone before outside zone four and then pushing through all the way to the finish line. So what we want here is a two move maximum at initiation. Didn't have any problems with that with any of the drivers yesterday. Emphasizing again, the transition between outside zone two and outside zone three, not in outside zone three. Once you leave outside zone three, slow the car, or excuse me, slow the car for transitioning to outside zone three, and then draw that arc from outside zone three to inside clip one. That should be pretty smooth and consistent. As we get into or leave inside clip one and go into outside zone four, once we get to angle into outside zone four, we want to maintain that angle and then go through the finish line and unwind. Let me show you something that might help give some perspective. These are some photos from down on the track. And you can kind of see how close in reality from like a bird's eye view or a driver's eye view um, two and three are. And they've got to cover that ground going from left to right. And so getting outside zone two and then getting to the deepest part of outside zone three is super difficult. And one of the things that was emphasized in the meeting is that if you're a chase driver, there may be a tendency or a willingness to take a shallower line at outside zone three because gaining proximity there will be pretty easy. And it will look like you're doing a, a really good thing because you could be right on the inside of that driver. But what they would rather see is have you stay back and follow that line into outside zone three because the level of difficulty to get into outside zone three. And there you can see outside zone three there, the depth, how close it is to the wall and things like that. There are the, the lines that are being drawn that if you were to place a car right on top of those lines, that's where we want to see the car pass through inside clip number one. And then there's outside zone four. So once we've transitioned, from the inside clip and we've come back around, we lock our angle in, we sit on it and push all the way through the finish line. 
let me show you a couple examples real quick that I think might be kind of interesting for you guys um, to take a look at. Um, now, this was not Chelsea's run was awesome. Uh, I'll just play it through real quick. But I want to show you a couple little um, minute differences here, and I'll turn the volume off and slow it down. See, he does a great job threading outside zone two. But as he gets to three, he kind of stops for a second and then angles into the zone. Let me play it out in fast motion, and then we'll we'll kind of show you some differences. So he does transition pretty much at the right time, but watch the flow of it. See, that's it's a little bit of a step there, right? If you're not paying attention, you wouldn't really notice it. Now let's take a look at let's take a look at um, Ryan Turk, and let's look at not just the, now he just hit the wall here, and somehow he's able to get back on. Let's play it out in fast motion. It looked like he had count. He's going to really thread that, and then he's middle deep of that zone. Let's go back and look at it again. The arc that he's drawing there is a pretty smooth arc. It's not stepped. It's pretty clean. Let's watch it again. Transitions, locked angle, floats it through. Now, maybe he could have been a little bit deeper towards the latter part of, that, of the zone, but you get the idea of just how difficult it is. Uh, let's take a look at, let's take a look at fields here. Back this up. So field was your number one qualifier, everybody's favorite driver. <laughs> Same thing for field, right? Threads it right at the edge transitions and see that smoothness there. He has a little bit of a kick at the end as he, as he gets prepared to inside clip one, that little kick right there. But the way that he gets through the zone is he transitions, sets the angle, holds, boom, and goes. And, you know, relative to Denofa, I think he actually could have been a little bit more right in line with this uh, inside clip, but he did the rest of the course pretty awesome. And because we know that the two most important parts of this course, in my opinion, are the performance on the big bank and the power alley from two to three, not just hitting two and doing it perfect, but then getting quickly across course to outside zone three in the deepest part of the zone. For me, that's going to be the, the point of difference today as a lead driver. And if the chase driver can match that, it's going to be unbelievable. I think that's pretty much all I have. Let's go back. Let's just, before we end here, let's informally, let's just make sure that uh, if there's anything cool that we covered. Okay. Yep. Yep. This is from qualifying in the practice session. We don't need that. Okay. I think that's pretty much it. Well, if you guys have any questions, leave some questions in the comments. I can have um, some of our folks answer them. If you guys have any suggestions for these videos in the future, just trying to do this informally, bring some information to you guys. Um, have a great show. Enjoy it. And uh, we'll see you online.